Good morning, everyone. If you would please take your seat, I'll go through some quick housekeeping rules. We're very excited that you're here, and we're a little bit behind, but not too much, so we're just going to get started. Um, if all of you, sorry, Facebook asks that we remain on this top level of the building during the duration of the conference um, and always wearing your badge. If you need to leave early, just let a staff member know. We've got staff written on our badges and someone from Facebook will escort you out. And if you have a special need to leave and come back, we can work that out too. Um, if you haven't already done so, please like us on Facebook. We'll be doing a very special grand prize drawing at the end of the conference. And yes, you do have to be here. And um, during the first 40 minutes of lunch and for a short while after the conference ends, Facebook is going to um, do these short one-on-one -on -one reviews of your Facebook site and give you any feedback so you can ask questions, you can get some coaching, you can you can have some real solid expertise, look at your Facebook page. Um, and the Wi-Fi information for access, if any of you are trying to get on your um, devices, is on the top of the program. So you should all have it. OK? And with that, I'm going to turn this over to Ann Blackwood from Facebook. She's the government affairs person. Thank you. Good morning, and welcome to Facebook. Um, we're very pleased and grateful that you're all here. I think they can hear me. Uh, oh, it's because you're recording. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> kind of a loud mouth. I'm used to speaking in front of people. Um, I'm our head of public policy here in the West for Facebook, and we're very grateful that you're here with us today. Um, our hosts, Assemblymember Kevin Mullen and Supervisor Warren Slocum, have a terrific agenda that they've put together. Um, Supervisor Slocum, as you know, uh, was the uh, Chief Elections Officer and County Assessor here in San Mateo County. And um, during his tenure, he did an awful lot to make sure that this area was a leader in technology and using technology to make government work for people. Assemblymember Mullen uh, is representing us extraordinarily well in Sacramento. We're very fortunate to have him there representing this community. Um, he, early in his tenure, he's two years in, was recognized as a leader there. And so we're looking forward to great things to come from him as well. Um, although we're innovating for the world here at Facebook, we're very mindful that uh, we're located in a diverse community that is supporting our innovation and growth. And again, we just want to thank you for being here today. I'll also note that um, our hosts are joined by two very strong women leaders. Uh, Jessica Stamfield Mullen, who is Public Affairs Manager for the League of Cities, and uh, Maria Diaz Slocum, who is the President of the Redwood City um, School Board. So I know a lot of you folks in the room here all know each other, so I'm looking forward to a lot of synergy and learning a lot myself today. And without further ado, Assemblymember Mullen and Supervisor Slocum. So here we, are, here we are, a year later. <laughs> Hashtag good morning, everybody. <laughs> Welcome to Connect 14, uh, strengthening communities through technology. Let me just say that Kevin and I are thrilled that you're all here. We're thrilled to be on the Facebook campus, and uh, we're thrilled to see all of you. I understand there was a sort of a big accident, unfortunately, on 101, and some of our attendees may be coming in a little late. But uh, for those of us that are here, it's great to see you all. And let me begin with a couple more thank yous, if I could. Um, first of all, thank you to uh, Ann Blackwood, who you just met, for that kind introduction. And thank you to Facebook for generously hosting us on this magnificent campus. I hope you all enjoyed it when you walked through uh, Main Street there. And we're, Kevin and I are really honored to be here at Facebook this year. And next, thank you to you all for taking time from your busy schedules to join us 
uh, for this conference today. Both Kevin and I are proud, very proud, to serve in an area where the leadership in local government is interested and engaged in using technology to better serve constituents. Before I go any further, let me just go off script, if I could, and uh, introduce to you one of my colleagues who I personally, in my year and a half on the Board of Supervisors, have learned a great deal from and also happens to be a very old and dear friend of mine, Supervisor Don Horsley, Board of Supervisors, San Mateo County. And I personally know that his schedule is very busy, so thank you for joining us. And uh, several years ago, I mean a lot of years ago, not several, many, many, many years ago, uh, Kevin and I dreamed of holding a conference like this one where we would gather local leaders to talk about citizen engagement and democracy, and so that working together with those leaders, we perhaps could chart a new course forward for better serving uh, citizens. So this conference is the realization of that dream that we had many, many, many years ago, and we're gathering here to learn different strategies to communicate, to connect, to engage, all the while using the tools of today. And we're fortunate to be living in very interesting times at the epicenter of technology that is truly changing the world. So Connect 14 is all about communication and community. Think about some of the topics on your program if you haven't checked it out already, but I'm certain that you have. Uh, one of the topics, digital strategy. Spend a buck and reach a million. How about that? Uh, mobile social media trends, the Instagram phenomena, uh, why being connected matters and how it can change lives. And one of my favorites, which nobody understood when I put it together, was and digital Darwinism, the evolution and adaption of social media. So those, so those sessions surely will stimulate some interesting conversations, questions, and hopefully will lead to individual and collective action, all aimed at better serving the people of San Mateo County and the region. You know, in the beginning, people communicated by carving hieroglyphics on cave walls and on the pyramids. Eventually, smoke signals, carrier pigeons, Morse code, and rotary phones, some of us remember those, were used. But today, today, we text, we all have smartphones, and we all use Facebook, right? <clears throat> right. So these changes have had profound effects on communications and community. At each juncture, the world changed. It fundamentally changed. So once again today, we're experiencing a titanic uh, shift where the continental plates collide, and a new landscape is born. Today, we have OMG, LOL, and hashtags. And when Jimmy Fallon and Justin Timberlake on The Tonight Show do a skit, do a comedy skit. We are not doing a skit. No. <laughs> on hashtags, you know you know that the number sign and the symbol drawn to start a tic-tac-toe game have really changed things. So think about it. Not only have things changed, but they've changed very, very rapidly. In February, in February of this year, the company celebrated, that's Facebook, celebrated its 10th anniversary. And in February, Mark Zuckerberg wrote, on Facebook, and I wanted to read you a little bit of that post. So I quote, today is Facebook's 10th anniversary. It's been an amazing journey so far, and I'm grateful to be a part of it. It's rare to be able to touch so many people's lives, and I try to remind myself to make the most of every day and have the biggest impact that I can. I remember getting pizza with friends one night in college, shortly after opening Facebook. I told them I was excited 
to help connect our school community, but that one day someone needed to connect the world. I always thought that this was important, giving people the power to share and stay connected, empowering people to build their own communities. And when I reflect on the last 10 years, one question I ask myself is, why were we the ones to build this? We were just students. We had way fewer resources than big companies, and if they had a focused on this problem, they could have solved it. He goes on to say, the only answer I can think of is, we just cared more. We just cared more about connecting the world than anyone else, and we still do today." End quote. So I wanted to share with you just a couple very, very simple and pretty mundane, actually, ways that social media has changed the way, some of the ways that it's changed how I work and how, in a little way, I get a dose of happiness every day. Let me just quickly share that with you. In a bygone era, after an event like this one, I would call my staff and ask how it went. How many people were there? What was the room like? Who said what? Well, today, I simply log on to Facebook and Instagram <laughs> to see almost in real time pictures and a narrative of what went on. And the same, hold true, the same holds true for learning about new things for me. Sam Sita's Facebook page, for instance, had a post yesterday about this uh, area at the airport, and uh, it was hashtag converge. And it's basically an area where travelers at the airport can go into this, this room, this facility, and they can talk, they can post up a topic and talk with others who are traveling, things about politics, the new economy, the shared economy, whatever it is they want to talk about. But imagine that, a room devoted to connecting people using uh, technology. That probably could only happen here in the Silicon Valley. And then on the happiness front, let me just tell you about my dog, our dog. Uh, now, he doesn't use Instagram, but uh, he's a golden doodle. And, a, and golden doodles, for those of you that don't know, is this new um, sort of, I don't know what you call it. It's a popular dog these days. It's a, a, a mix of golden retriever and poodle, so it's, it has a very unique personality. And doodle owners, uh, I found out, we all have this very special bond. We want to look at... Uh, the other person's doodle, right? <laughs> and see them doing, I know, it's, it's crazy. I'm sharing with you some personal stuff. I know it's crazy. But they're so cute. Go on Instagram and do a search for Samson the doodle. You'll die. In any event, there's, there's this whole world of doodle owners on Instagram. They share these pictures of their dogs dressed up in these different outfits and sunglasses and doing all kinds of things. It's really great. Um, but the point is that, you know, it allows me to connect to that community. And I can tell you that every day when I look at the doodle feed on Instagram, it just makes me smile and laugh. These dogs are so cute. And, of course, by following other people on Facebook, you know, I get glimpses into what they're doing. Um, I follow Kevin, for instance. Um, but I also learned about the county manager, John Maltby's uh, last bike ride of the summer at Coyote Point on Facebook. I followed the county manager as he took a brief vacation with his family to Italy. I felt like I was there. And the one thing I just want to share with you quickly about those Facebook posts is John Maltby has to be the best dressed traveler I've ever known. Isn't that right? Yeah. Yeah. The other thing, just uh, um, Supervisor Horsley, who I introduced you to, has a Facebook page. And there I learned about things like his travels with his granddaughter to the Discovery Museum and how she's so interested in science and bugs and snakes and all the things that most of us would go, ew, about. 
And I share with others pretty much on a daily basis what I'm doing, what, of course, the golden doodle is doing, <laughs> and what the family is doing. So, in short, as this day unfolds, I encourage you um, to, as it might be heresy, but do tweet, do post up to Facebook, and uh, put up some pictures on Instagram if you have time. But ask yourself, ask yourself, how can technology lead to better governance here? And how many resources does your organization commit to that goal? And just one last little special word, um, if I could. Um, I'd like to thank Assembly Member Kevin Mullen, who I've known for a lot of years, um, for co-hosting this conference and for sharing his passion and his excitement for technology and what it can mean for the people that we both serve. So thank you, Kevin. Appreciate it. So he needs no introduction, but Assembly Member Kevin Mullen. So Warren, thank you for your ongoing leadership on these issues. We do indeed uh, go way back. And let me just say, your, your golden doodle has nothing on my Carrie Beagle sunshine. <laughs> She gets the most likes by far of all the stuff we put up there. It's like, it's like not even close. And my wife is here. She's responsible for most of it. So. Uh, thank you, Warren, uh, for all that you do uh, in linking uh, technology and service. Warren is a civic entrepreneur. He, uh, I think, is the very definition of that. And it's an honor to stand uh, with you today, Warren, at the conference. I want to thank Ann Blackwood and the staff at Facebook for hosting us. Uh, as I was preparing for today, I was thinking about some recent events here on the peninsula. Box, a cloud content management company, announced last week that it was moving its corporate headquarters to downtown Redwood City and will occupy a yet-to-be-completed building. Early commentary suggests that this will open the door for more tech interest on the peninsula and Redwood City and other areas, much of which... I am proud to represent in Assembly District 22. A couple of weeks ago, Apple unveiled its iPhone 6, which went on sale Friday. And perhaps more important, its Apple Watch. Unlike an iPhone or iPad, an Apple Watch creates constant connectivity. You are wearing it, after all. And most of us still wear watch, who still wear watches have them on longer than we hold our smartphone. So what new apps and platforms will this lead to? Why do I focus on these two items? Because both are in our backyard and both are going to change the landscape, one liter literally, one figuratively, in a relatively short time. Think about where we are today. While this physical building existed 10 years ago, our host as it exists today did not. As Supervisor Slocum mentioned, Facebook launched in 2004 out of a Harvard dorm room. A short decade later, Facebook has become the dominant social media platform and has influenced and continues to shape how we communicate. So when a cloud computing company that also did not exist 10 years ago signs a 12-year lease, and when an established tech hardware giant releases a new product, I pay attention because the tech world is moving faster than we can imagine. I'm also very excited for what this means for San Mateo County, but I'm also concerned about what this means for government. As I mentioned last year, our goal is to encourage government to embrace technology and use the opportunities to better serve the public. We are barely keeping pace and quite honestly, some of us are still behind. But the venture capital world is finally starting to pay attention to government. In another news item from last week, if you'll indulge me, GovTech Fund, a $23 million fund managed by entrepreneur and Code for America mentor Ron Buganim, officially launched last Monday. It's the first venture capital fund dedicated to government technology startups. They're based in San Francisco and announced investments in four companies, which I'll delineate very briefly for you. 
Smart Procure collects and provides government purchasing information that helps local officials determine if they're getting the best deal and allows vendors to see rivals pricing information. The second one, Amigo Cloud is a mobile mapping technology that provides wireless GIS services. Seamless Docs is a cloud-based document service that allows users to create online forms and e-sign submissions from mobile devices. And then my favorite, the last one, Mind Mixer, which provides an easy way for local officials to poll or get feedback from residents about proposed actions. The city of San Mateo used this service to engage residents in a park redesign and received more public participation than they would have with traditional methods of seeking public input. I personally have made it a goal of my assembly office to use technology as much as possible to better serve and connect those I represent. Toward this end, I have started Capital Connection, a quarterly video link sent out via email to close to 45,000 constituents. Through the video, I can provide insight and updates on what's happening in Sacramento. My constituents are able to see and hear me. Uh, I guess that's a good thing. Um, and I encourage them to provide feedback via email or social media so I get a better sense of what's on their minds and so I could better represent their interests at the Capitol. I can't help but wonder about the college students sitting in their dorm room right now who has already developed the next big technology leap and the quick changes that that will bring. Will we be prepared? That is a question for all of us today. So I invite you to engage, to go back to your organization and experiment and to implement a technology tool that will enhance your service delivery model. On a final note, for those of you here using social media, we encourage you to use hashtag ConnectSMC. That's hashtag ConnectSMC on Twitter and Facebook so the outside world can track what we're talking about and thinking about today. And make sure that you like us. We like to be liked, of course. And we are also streaming this event uh, live as well. So thank you to Facebook uh, for making that possible. So thank you all for being here. It's an honor to represent you in Sacramento. With that, let's get started with our keynote. Thank you. Is that me? I guess I'm introducing the keynote. Hang on a second.